This month we are kicking off a brand new series for anyone who's just getting into garment sewing. So each week this month we will have a topic that will be geared towards you guys that have just gotten into garment sewing. Our first one we'll be starting with is kind of an essential kit to really get you started sewing your first garment. So we are sharing some things that we just cannot live without when it comes to sewing. The first thing is probably what all beginner sewers need but and experienced sewers too. too. I feel like I use this still on every single garment yes. one way or another. It's funny, I'll get to the end of a project and be like, did I get out my seam ripper? <laughs> I still think about that. Um, so of course, seam ripper. You just have to have a seam ripper. You're going to make mistakes, you got to have one. Um, can't live without it. Yeah. <laughs> we really like this one um, because it has a rubber end on the bottom so after you rip the seam you can rub this rubber thing across the seam and it pulls out all mm -hmm. the threads so that makes it nice and simple so we prefer this one over just like your plastic yeah the, one the little plastic ones it has a nice big handle and it's mm -hmm. also like ergonomically mm -hmm. <laughs> whatever designed for your hand um because you might be doing a lot of it in yeah. the beginning so you want to try and be as comfortable as possible and it's easy to see too like some of the really small ones that yeah. come with your machine like yeah. you can lose those yeah. things so True. yeah so I'll that one uh, next up we have just some marking tools i think we have three of them um first up is a chalk this is a chalk stick almost i don't really know how to explain it but um you it's roll it um so you roll it along your fabric like this. This is the best one I found for chalk. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's different ones where you can change the colors, which sometimes you do need different colored chalks. Um, I need a white one mainly because of dark fabrics. Yeah. And it's a very thin line right. so that you can get really precise marking. The other ones with the interchangeable chalk, the line is so thick sometimes. It's like it's regular. It's like a regular piece of chalk almost. Mm -hmm. It's just really small. So as you use it, it wears down on one side yes. and becomes, you Very know, thick. a wider line. Yeah. So this clover one is really that cool. My favorite. And then we have we talked about these Frickson mm -hmm. pens before. Um, I think in our favorite notions video. Um, but these are just really good for um, you know, marking really precisely on lighter fabrics. It looks like we have a regular pen and then a highlighter. Yes, and I find that I use both um, for a different reason. Sometimes the highlighter will, will glide um, smoother on a fabric. And of course, I love my ballpoint because you really need that precise line, especially for a dart. I always use the ballpoint for a dart. Mm -hmm. But sometimes the ballpoint won't glide over a fabric. So okay, highlighter, I, and that's when I use the highlighter. Mm -hmm. So yes. that's why you'll need many different marking tools and marking you'll find is just really critical in order to get your garment to have that really professional finish Ow. <laughs> really professional finish and also um you know just have the results that you're looking for a lot of times like it's going to be really hard for you to get around not making a dart for example darts are in almost every single garment that you make because that's what makes a two-dimensional piece of fabric three-dimensional and give mm -hmm. it shape and if you can't make that point at the very tip of the dart exactly where it needs to be and draw those legs out to the raw edges of the side seam then you're going to have a wonky looking dart so yeah. i mean marking tools are just really critical to, to have a successful project in the end. Yes. Something you're still really proud of. Yes. So. And you definitely, when you, when you forget to mark, going back to putting that pattern piece on to get those marks, it's just never as accurate. Right. So, yeah, doing it in the beginning. beginning. Yeah. What else? Um, so, a couple different things for measuring. measuring. Um, of course, you got to have seam gauge. This one goes up to six inches and it's got the, the sliding bar. So it's nice if you're doing a, a hem, mm -hmm. um, you can put it where you want the hem and um, that helps you keep that consistent marking with that. Mm -hmm. And then I find I also really use a clear ruler, especially for drawing those darts. So mm -hmm. I use my clear ruler so I can see um, if you're just met marking pleats yep. along a fabric, I find I really need both of these. Yeah, exactly. And I'll use this too. You'll see on your pattern pieces, the grain line and the grain line always needs to be absolutely mm -hmm. parallel to the finished selvage edge of the fabric. Mm -hmm. So the clear ruler is really great to do that because you can set one end on the selvage end of the fabric 
and then you can see that grain line through here so mm -hmm. you know if you need to twist it or turn it to get mm -hmm. it to be exactly straight that's when I think I use this the most mm -hmm. um, in addition to darts I also like this one um, because it's a little bit heavier mm -hmm. I don't know I feel like it kind of presses the fabric down yeah. a little bit but one measuring tool that is missing that is really critical is a measuring tape yes um, obviously you'll need that to measure your body to know mm -hmm. which size to make mm -hmm. um, so that's just almost like a given that yeah. you'll need, you'll need one of those for Definitely. sure. I measure every time. Do you? Nope. Well, there you go. You can decide what works best for you. <laughs> you measure your body every time? My body, I don't know. My body hasn't changed since, since high school probably. I think maybe because I second <laughs> guess. I think I oh, second guess I remember the numbers. It. Yeah, I got mine down. That's um, good. Write it down. <laughs> yeah. Well, my body does change. Your body does change. So I get it doesn't hurt anything. <laughs> cool. What else? Okay. So, oh, so here's another good one. So, really good scissors are going to be important. I don't think that you can just go into your craft drawer mm -hmm. or your kids craft supply and pull out any old pair of scissors. I think you'll find it to be really cumbersome, also maybe really annoying, and worst of all, not having precise results. So having a dedicated pair of sewing scissors, scissors that are meant to cut fabric, is really critical. There are a couple of brands out there. I've only ever used Fiskars that come with the orange handle, and I probably had three different pairs in the four and a half years that I've been sewing. So I try and replace them. Um, pretty regularly, mm -hmm. but you know scissors you, there are other ways to cut your fabric before a beginner Do you agree? I kind of think scissors are probably the best way to go In the beginning. Yeah, I had scissors for a while first before I went up to a, a rotary um, Before you really know you're committed in this I yeah. wouldn't invest in a mat and the rotary right. blades um, But and two, you know if you're investing in a pair of scissors, they have Joann's I mean mm -hmm. 15 20 dollars, but wait until you have a 50% off coupon or yeah. your own sale to begin with and you yeah. can get them reasonably priced so. Yeah, and I mean it is an investment But it, it is one of those that's really really worth it You can skimp on a seam ripper for example mm -hmm. and just get the cheap one But scissors, scissors. really are pretty important and then you want to hoard them and not let yeah, any of your family your members get, them. get a hold of them for don't any cut reason. velcro with them <laughs> right exactly you want to be really protective so that it lasts longer yeah and i do want to share um i took a craftsy class and you know how they always said don't cut um your with your fabric scissors you shouldn't cut your paper patterns with them well the woman on there said that that's not true it's so just an old wives tale. It's an old wives tale that she thinks maybe people started because they didn't want their family using, oh. <laughs> using their good sewing scissors. So they said, you, you can't use my scissors. Paper. But um, yeah, she was, I mean, she's a professional. It's what she does for a living. And she said, that's not true. So there will probably be some people out there who still would say, I, I don't say care. Yeah, I don't care. care. Yeah. I've heard it. Because <laughs> you've heard it. It's like you know yeah. a commandment in yeah. sewing that yeah, you can't cut with paper. paper yeah but i probably do i do yeah i do have a pair dedicated to paper in my sewing room but it, it, if it's you know over on the other side yeah. of the room sometimes i'll just right yeah. I, i'm probably <laughs> the same way yeah. so a couple more things in here um this is something that i don't use anymore Thank i you. still use it you do i do mm -hmm. um but i got it when i i mean almost immediately after I got my machine. This is one of the very first things that I bought. And it is basically a magnetic seam allowance measure or, or guide for your sewing machine. So mm -hmm. it's magnetic on the bottom so that it attaches to that metal plate that's on the bottom of your sewing machine. And you can set it at like 5 8 seams, for example, which are mm -hmm. mostly what you use in garment sewing, a 5 8 inch seam allowance. You can set it there and then whenever you feed your fabric in, you have just like a wider plate that you can just rest your fabric again gently and you know move it along so that if you're not so good at keeping the seam allowances straight you'll have kind of a guide there to help yeah. you through it i mean the machine has lines on it but sometimes those in the beginning it's those lines are those hard lines. yeah to follow when i taught sewing classes people i mean everybody loved that that was their one thing they felt like they couldn't they couldn't live without which yeah. really helped and i still use it sometimes if i'm hemming something and i'll call for like a one inch hem or a two inch hem, like a really wide hem, I'll, you know, I'll take my um, 
see mm -hmm. if I can hand gauge and measure on my fabric two inches and then make a mark and then put it under my needle and just move this guy wherever that is because mm -hmm. my I don't have enough bars on my plate to go up to two inches so I'll just put that there. That's a good reason to still use it. I yeah. think I would just mark the fabric all the way around at this point. Really? That would take way more time. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. But I lost this thing a long time well, ago. Then, yeah. I don't have it anymore. Yeah. So maybe that's why. And but. I mean, it's a little pricey. Five or six bucks or something. Mm -hmm. So I mean, things do add up. So once again, wait for another joint. But couldn't you just buy any old square magnet? Do you need this metal thing? Well, the bar does help. I mean, it's a extends okay. out. But I'm sure. I mean, if you're handy, you could come up with some contraption on your own. Yeah. But next is something very cheap and simple, and you might even already have in your kitchen drawer. You can use this to turn out the points. Um, say you're sewing a, a skirt with a zipper and it's got the waistband that you need to flip and poke out the little edges to make a really clean little corner there. You can just use a bamboo stick. Yep. Um, for that, there's also ones that you can purchase, which I also do have, um, that are meant for getting those really nice corners. But I still find myself using this for certain things, mm -hmm. even though I have those ones that they sell for getting a nice neat corner. So. Yeah, I have the. I don't have a, just a regular chopstick. I have one that I purchased. Yeah. But, um, yeah, there really is nothing better. You can't get your fingers in that far, even if you try and like. None of it works. You really need a tool really to help you. So, get those corners. Um, and even in a beginner garment, even in the most basic garments, um, you're gonna like she mentioned, like a skirt with a zipper in the back. Like you're gonna have to finish your waistband, and usually that is done by sewing the waistband right sides together and then flipping it out. So you have that corner where they come together in the back usually, or wherever your zipper is. And you'll just want that to be n at a nice right angle. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no other way really to do that than, than with a tool. So this might seem a little bit like, what are they talking yeah. about? Turning corners, waistbands, I don't even know. But once you do a pattern that has this, then you'll, then you'll know what we're talking about. Yes. And you'll be glad that you went out and got this. <laughs> or pulled it out of your kitchen drawer. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So that is it for... It? We've got oh, no, far, sorry. <laughs> Not it, I got ahead of myself. I got something else cheap here for you. As long as you have a printer or somewhere to print and a piece of cardstock. This is free off of the Scientific Seamstress website. Um, it's just got lots, it's got from a quarter inch all the way up to five inches. And I use this a lot um, for hems. You can just fold it over, your fabric over to where you want it. I especially um, used it when I was sewing little girl skirts. You know, it's just the square of fabric. Mm -hmm. It's a very straight line. You're using quilting cotton, so easy to press and turn, mm -hmm. not a silky, tricky fabric. Mm -hmm. And I just would flip it over to 0.5, press, Mm -hmm. move press it's so easy you can actually make this yourself too if you don't have a printer at your house you can just take a ruler mm -hmm. and a piece of cardboard and make your own lines where you need it but hers is ready to go mm -hmm. so i use this a lot yeah, it's cute. replace it every so often because you know sometimes it gets a little wrinkly from the steam of your iron true this one is a little bit of a luxury i guess you could say but i have to have it <laughs> it took me a while to jump on to this. I could never live without it now. Now I could not live without no. it. No, true. It's a magnetic pin holder. Um, I, they, you know, I for, before I got it, I just kept them in their little plastic box that came in, but this just, I have to have it. And then you spill pins, you can just take it over and pick up your pins. Well, I think that's what did it for me, is I kept knocking over that little plastic <laughs> thing, and then pins would be everywhere. And I would, if, much as I would tell myself, like the pins are right there, don't hit them. I don't. You just pull your fabric mm -hmm. in a certain way, and just drags them right off the counter, and they yeah. fall everywhere. Yeah. So I think I had picked up all of my pins just too one many too many times, times. and yeah. I said, you know what? There, I I think I had a Joann's coupon. Mm -hmm. They sell them there, and or maybe even got it off Amazon yeah. for Amazon Prime with the free shipping and stuff. Whatever. Like I just said, you know, it's time, and I. A, never knock that thing off the counter because it's like heavier. Mm -hmm. And even if I did, like the pins aren't going anywhere. Yeah. So. And I actually, I love it so much. I've got two. I've got one next to my sewing machine and then over one at the ironing board. <laughs> I can't live without it. Well. Yes. But I do like, uh, one has a lid and one doesn't. I do prefer the lid because it's nice to pop it on and put it away. Uh -huh. um, so I like that. 
Now, I know you don't have a lot of places to store all your sewing stuff. I've got a, a room, it's a guest room, but I use it as my sewing room. So all my stuff kind of stays out in their little cups and yeah. cutesy things that I put on my um, sewing table. But all my stuff has to get put away at some point because my sewing room is also my kitchen, which is also my dining room, which is also open to my living room. Mm -hmm. It's all kind of one big area. Actually, it's a small area, but one <laughs> open area with multiple uses. So I can't just have like little. Oh, why are they calling me? That's really weird. I'll let them leave a message. Um, so I can't just have everything in these little containers that would be way too obnoxious. So what I did is I invested in a caboodle. <laughs> you might remember Why this is from, not glittery? from <laughs> the 80s. I need a lot more stickers, basically. <laughs> All I have is one little fortune that I stuck on there. I don't even know why. But um, so basically, it's just like a sewing toolbox, if you want to think of it that way. It opens up like this, and it has the multiple layers, and you can put bigger things in the bottom, like scissors. It's where I store my pen case, and then it has all these little compartments for everything else that you need. Your needles, your all my pens are in here. I have my measuring tape, all my other sewing feet. Like literally every tool that I use for sewing, other than the big rulers and the um, mat all of it goes in here um and so it's really great to be able to have everything in one place and then whenever i'm done for the day then i just close it all up and then lock it up and then it goes underneath my island and it just stays there all in one place okay. so this is what i use my little sewing toolbox nice. i have a real <laughs> toolbox but this is my sewing toolbox so yeah, so if you have a, if you're just getting into this and you don't want to, you know, dedicate a whole space to it, um, this is a great way for you. Plus too, if you're taking sewing classes, yeah, and you need, uh, to need to transport, mm -hmm. it's really That's great to have all handy. of this, yeah. um, you know, with a little handle that you can carry to the sewing classes or a friend's house or, I mean, we used to travel a lot more with our stuff than we do now, but, um, yeah. so that's really, really great. Is that it? That is it. Okay, good. Um, so yeah, so that's it. That's, these are our must have tools for any beginner sewer. Um, I think next week we're going to talk about the patterns that are perfect for beginners. We've actually gotten a couple requests for that so in the comments. So I am happy to be able to give that to those folks. So stay tuned, um, subscribe to our channel so that when, um, our other videos go live, you'll get a notification. Um, like I said, we're doing patterns next week, fabric the week after that, and then just some like good online resources for the following week. So hopefully this will be a really great month for all of you. And even if you've been sewing before, you'll still enjoy hearing what our ideas are. Um, for those experienced sewers out there, if you have any other suggestions, for the beginners out there regarding tools that they must have leave those in the comments below and we can kind of start a conversation um bringing the, uh, the all the minds together yes. to help out the beginner sewist so that they will stick with it and be a part of our little club forever and ever yeah. <laughs> so yeah so that's it for today we will see you next time bye bye